In this video, we're going to study a special type of morphological processes called non-concatenative morphology. They are the processes that turn a root like man into men. So, so far we have seen morphemes that are concatenated. So they come one after the other. In nationalizes, for example, we have nation, all, eyes, and even the S for the tense. By the way, uh, notice that this is the root, and then these are suffixes, and we write the suffix with a little dash to the left to indicate that this is the position where they will stick onto the root. In unbreakable, we have a prefix, and we have a little dash to the right to indicate that this is the position where we will stick to the root. So again, these are chains of, of concatenated morphemes. Unbreakable. pre art so, so far we have only seen them like this. However, there are many morphological processes that are non-concatenative, where there is some change in the root, or there is one uh, morpheme that uh, breaks a root in two, or maybe there's a root that is reduplicated and occurs twice. We are going to study these processes in this video. We're going to look at ablouts, infixation, reduplication, and suppletion. Let's start with ablaut, which is a very common process in English. Ablauts are a process where a morpheme changes a, some phoneme, some component inside of a root. So for example, if you have the singular word man in English, in order for you to make it plural, you need to change a part of the root. You need to turn the a into e for men. In foot, you need to change the e for the e in feet. Likewise, in sing, you need to change the e into the a of sang to form the past tense. So we call this type of morpheme an ablaut. German has them too, for example, in the plural, to turn vogel, bird, into vögel, birds, you change this vowel into its rounded version. Likewise, from muta to muta, you change the u to its rounded form. For the, uh, the plural of man, man, you do two things. You have an ablaut where you change the a to an a, and then you add the suffix a to it, mena, men. So you can have an ablaut and a suffix at the same time. Finally, in the Maori of Aotearoa New Zealand, you have words like tangata and wahine. Tangata and wahine man and woman, and the plural is formed by changing the first a into a long a, tangata wahine, men, women. So this process of changing a part of the root is called an ablaut. We also have infixation. So a couple of videos ago we looked at infixation in Tagalog, where you had a root like sulat, and then you had the infix um to form sumulat, which was a uh, rot. In, um, infixes uh, are morphemes that break into a root and sort of nestle in the middle. English has an infix. It is called the English expletive infixation, for example, with a morpheme like freak. Um, for example, in fantastic, you could have this morpheme break the, uh, the root in two and nestle in there to form the word fan freaking tastic. And absolutely, you can have abso freaking lutely. And from outrageous, you can form out freaking rages. Notice that it's an infix and it has lines, dashes on both sides because it is contacting, making contact with the root from both sides. There are restrictions to how uh, you need to build the expletive infixation. You need to place the morpheme right before the stressed syllable of the word. So you have fantastic. So that's why you get fan freaking tastic. Absolutely. Abso freaking lutely. You cannot do it, for example, uh, in before an unstressed syllable. You cannot have ab freaking solutely, which sounds odd. So these are infixes. 
We also have reduplication. In full reduplication, for example, you take a root and then you repeat it complete. And this will mean something else. For example, in Maori from Aotearoa, New Zealand, we have roots like mate, kimo, and wera, sick, wink, and hot. And the reduplicated forms are mate, mate, kimo, kimo, wera, wera, which are an attenuation of the quality. The, the, this one only means sickly, uh, blink, which is just wink a little, and wera, wera, just warm. In Malay, uh, the plural is formed with reduplication, so ruma, buku, and batu are the singular, house, book, and rock. Rumah rumah, buku buku, batu batu are houses, books, and rocks. It is more common to find partial reduplication, where only a part of the root is repeated. For example, we also see this in the verbs of Tagalog. Trust me, there's a lot going on with the verbs in Tagalog. They're amazing. So we have roots like basa, sulat, and even uh, loan words like graduate, to graduate. The future form of the verb is formed by reduplicating the first syllable of the root. So the, uh, the verb will read is babasa, susulat, gra graduate, or will graduate. In Māori of Aotearoa, New Zealand, we have roots like paki, kimo, piri, and fero. And the, par and the reduplicated form, we'd only have the first syllable, papaki, kikimo, pipiri, Fefero. The first three are like a more sudden version of the root. So to pat, to slap, to wink, to shut your eyes, and then to cling and to cling together. Uh, fefero is like an attenuation, a lesser uh, quality of red. It means reddish. English has one type of reduplication which is the dismissive reduplication. Uh, for example, in accident sh maxident, table sh mabel, baby sh maybe, spiderman sh man, apple sh maple. The process for, for constructing this one is that you need to replace the onset of the first syllable with the morpheme sh -m. And I'm missing an M here, it's sh -m. So you take the onset of the first syllable of table, which is the T, and replace it with shm, table shmabel. Finally, we have suppletion, which is changing the root for something completely different. Um, these are what we call irregular verbs. So if we have the present tense go, the past tense is went, where you do have the past tense uh, suffix, the t, but this, the root is now when. Uh, in good, the comparative form is not gooder, it's better. So that came from somewhere else. Likewise, in bad, we have worse, which is a completely different root from bad. Suppletion is very interesting because it happens when verbs get like mixed up over time. So this table here has the verb to go in Romance languages. For example, in Spanish, the infinitive is ir, to go. The present is Yo voy, I go. The future is iré, I will go. And the past perfect form is fui, I went. And all these look very different. Boy has nothing to do with fui or with iré. And it is because in the process of transforming Latin into the Romance languages, a bunch of verbs got mixed up and eventually ended up being this like being understood as the same verb. For example, in ir, the infinitive comes from the verb number two, ire, which is the actual Latin word to go. But the present tense, boy, comes from the word wadere, which was to proceed. The future tense, ire, also comes from ire, but the past tense, fui, comes from the past fui of the verb to be. It was was. It was a, like in, were you in Paris or have you been to Paris? So this, were you in Paris became like, were you going to Paris over time? As you can see, each of these uh, Romance languages chose some combination of these four verbs to make the single verb to go. 
So in summary, there are several morphological processes that are non-concatenative, where the root suffers some process that it's not just sticking something next to it. In an ablaut, you change a part of the root, like going from man to men. In infixation, you insert an, another morpheme right inside of the root, like in fan freaking tastic. In reduplication, you duplicate the root or part of it, as in table schmabel. And in suppletion, you completely replace a root, like in go and went. In the next video, we're going to study another non-concatenative process that's so important that it gets its own video, root and pattern morphology.